Hey, welcome back to another YouTube video. Um, we're here for our third and final part on muzzle training with our gorgeous walk and train client, Gordo. What you're gonna see in this video is continuing to build duration and confidence around, <coughs> excuse me, around the muzzle. Um, you're gonna see a really important step, which is the actual clipping up of the muzzle, like the strapping on of the muzzle is one part that we can't necessarily fully prepare a dog for because if you think about it, the whole time we've been doing this training, I'm holding the muzzle in my hand. When we clip the muzzle on and we let go, it's the first time they're gonna feel the weight on their face and it's gonna move. And I feel some dogs, of course, are gonna just go, yeah, whatever scrub. But you see, Gordo has a couple of moments of like, whoa, this is a bit strange. You know, this is part of the process. It's really important to be able to read a dog's body language, to be able to judge, okay, are we in the zone of, you know, this feels a bit weird and uncomfortable, but I'm building resilience? Or are we in the zone of this feels weird and uncomfortable and you're undoing all of the good work that you've done to create a positive association to this muzzle. So you'll notice that I'm watching him quite carefully. When I let go of that muzzle, I've got a couple of moments where I'm giving him a little shoulder scratch just to try and help take away that tactile sensation or try to mediate it a little bit. So circling back to the fact that being able to read body language is so important, you guys, to see that subtlety of when they say, ooh, I didn't like it, um, it's really, really important. So let's have a look at the first video, which is gonna be fussing with the straps, building towards doing them up. Muscle. Yes. Yes. Good. Ready. Hold on. You want more, you want more chicken? Do you want more chicken? Do you want to do this? Do you want to do this? why we add that part of fussing with the straps. Hey, hey, he's a good boy. Are you a good boy? I love you. Are you? Touch. Yes. Good one. touch and bind it so we're just going to pop him on his leg and do that and then we're going to come back in and do some more so should we go less is more right so you see in a couple of those reps when i strap the muzzle on one of them when i let go i think one when i don't let go we see a little bit of head throwing a little bit of poor action um we're going to monitor those sorts of things really closely but we're also going to look at gordo's enthusiasm towards the training towards the presentation of the muzzle my prediction is that head throwing and poor action is just a case of like wow this weight on my face that i haven't felt before it's kind of weird i don't think he was distressed by it 
but I'm going to keep a really close eye on that to monitor it. What you're going to see in the next session is the next week um, later, so seven days later, our next training session, we start to work on generalizing the skill in new environments. We've only ever trained this skill inside Gordo's house. So what we're doing now is changing the environment by just going into the front yard. You'll notice that I dropped my expectation. We had been at the stage training inside of putting the muzzle on, fussing with the straps, clipping it on, and then marking by saying yes and reinforcing. Suddenly, I'll take it back a few steps and all I want him to do is stick his face in the muzzle and I feed just like we would have done in part two of the YouTube series. But what you'll see is we then build up on that so much faster than what we did originally in the first environment. And this is the thing, when you're training a dog, if you change the environment, you change the context on them completely. You should expect your training to regress when you change environment because the distractions are completely different. But if you work hard on your training and you're really good at reading your dog, you're going to find that the second environment comes on so much quicker than the first. The third environment comes on so much quicker than the second and so on and so forth. So have a little look at the level of the behavior in these videos. See that drop in expectation on my part so that Gordo is able to just start kicking goals sooner. Yes. You ready? Oh my goodness, what's this? Oh, hang on, where are we going? Muzzle! Yes! Oh, he's a good boy! Muzzle! Yes! Oh, so good! He's so good! He's so good, do you want to wear your muzzle? Yes. Wow, you're so good, Gordo. Find it. Ready? Do you want to wear your muzzle? Yes. Oh, yuck. We don't like that sound. You like that sound? It's yucky. Oh, boo. Touch. Yes. Boom. Believe. Touch. Yes. Watch your legs, buddy. You love to get tangled up. He's such a good boy. So bright. So smart. So handsome. Muzzle. Good. He's so good. Yes. 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 Okay, we'll take it off. We'll take it off. Wow. 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 He's so smart. Gordo, sit. Down. Wait. So you see how quickly we bumped that up, you know, we were like face in feed, face in feed, fiddle with straps feed, straps on feed. Um, it's really just important to just err on the side of caution when you're building on these sorts of plans and you'll often be pleasantly surprised, but start small and build up on it. Um, I think we talked about this in one of our previous YouTube videos. I joke that it's like the training equivalent of adding salt to a dish. If I put in a cup of salt, I can't take that cup of salt out. But if I just put a little sprinkle in and keep adding to taste, I'm gonna get the perfect level of salt in my dish. Just like with the training with Gordo, we're just gonna start with a pinch until we get the perfect amount of salt. What you're gonna see in these next videos is the week after. So, you know, this is sort of three weeks of training that you're seeing in today's YouTube video. Um, we're now working on just integrating the muzzle into his walk. So we're still working in just the front yard area and the inside of the house space, but we're putting on his harness, putting on his leash, going outside, doing a bit of training, putting the muzzle on, and then working on skills that he knows really well and skills that he really enjoys doing. So wearing the muzzle just becomes a part of the game. Ready? Yes. 
Hey Gordo, are you ready? Sorry, it's a bit way, isn't it? Are you ready? On your marks, get set, go! Go, 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 yes! it. What I'm going to be doing with the sweet Gordo for the next week or so or the next couple of weeks is we're going to go out for a walk just like we always do. He, I'm just going to have the muzzle with me and at random points on the walk I'm going to be like do you want to wear your nose hat? Do you want to put your muzzle on? We'll put the muzzle on, we'll have a fantastic time and I'll take it off again before he says oh, I'm, I'm, I'm getting a bit over this. Remember you want to stop well before they say this sucks um, you want to be watching their body language and watching their enthusiasm and the way they're engaging with the environment. Take the muzzle off the moment they're not having a 100% amazing time. If they're even sort of going, this is okay, I'm going to take the muzzle off and give them a break because we have that luxury to do so. Um, but if they're saying this is fantastic, I'm having a wonderful time, as Gordo was in the last video, he's running, he's loose, he's wiggly, he's following instructions except for that weight. Um, you know, he's doing a really great job. Um, so the last thing I want to talk about before we set off on our way is just the sizing of muzzles. One of the things that's really important with muzzles is that the dog is able to have a full pant. One of the ways that they'll get you to measure for a muzzle is if you've got a dog that'll hold a tennis ball in their mouth, they'll actually ask you to measure the mouth circumference while they're holding a ball. Gordo is an in-between size, um, so I think the muzzle he's wearing in the video is a size 4 Baskerville. Uh, is actually a little bit too small for him. Um, he doesn't have as much pant room as I'd like him to have, but a size five is enormous on him and it gets in his eyes. So we might look at a different brand of muzzle for him eventually to see if we can get something that fits him a little bit better. But because he's only gonna be wearing it for very short periods of time, we're aware that he doesn't have as much pant room as we would like him to have. We can monitor those things, make sure we're not putting it on for extended periods, especially if he's in hot weather, especially if he's gonna be doing high impact exercise or getting really panting. Um, so these are all those little things that you do need to consider even once a dog is fully trained. Once Scordo is fully muzzle trained too, I need to accept there might be a day that I ask him, do you wanna wear your muzzle? And he might say no. Um, you know, unless it's of dire importance, it's okay to let your dog say no. Um, when your dog is saying no to different things, even if it's a trained behavior, they're giving you information about how they're feeling on that day. Um, they're giving you information about where your training is at or the environment that they're in. So listen to your dog. Like, remember your dogs are allowed to say no. And the last thing I'll say before I do say goodbye is that if you see a dog in a muzzle, please remember that that dog is a responsibly owned dog. That person who lives with that dog and is the guardian of that dog is being so responsible and looking after their pet and keeping them safe. So try not to be too worried if you see a dog in a muzzle in public. Ignore them like you should ignore all dogs in public unless somebody says, hey, do you want to pat my dog? Um, and just make sure you keep on being a good dog lover that way. So guys and girls, thank you so much for joining us for the muzzle training series. Um, I hope that you've gotten some enjoyment out of it. Drop us a comment if this has been helpful for you. Um, if you have any questions, if there's anything that didn't make sense, we'd love to hear from you too. But otherwise, we hope that your training continues to be a howling success.